Okay, selamat siang teman-teman uh, and good afternoon Mr. Norman Chi. Good afternoon. Well, welcome to the live session with Shepherd Hallam University hosted by me as a moderator. My name is Klani dari AECC Global dan hari ini kita ditemani oleh uh, Mr. Norman Chi dari Shepherd Hallam University. Uh, Norman is the manager of student recruitment, admission, and development Southeast Asia Regional Office. Okay, teman-teman, belajar ke luar negeri merupakan satu uh, keputusan yang sangat besar dalam hidup kita. Jadi, a lot of things to ask, dan so many things to consider. Jadi, hari ini, AECC Global dengan uh, Shepherd Hallam University yang di representasikan oleh Norman Chi akan berada di sini selama satu jam untuk menjawab semua pertanyaan Anda mengenai belajar di Sheffield Hallam University. Jadi jangan lupa type your questions and we will answer accordingly. Karena kita cuma punya satu jam, uh, dengan tidak membuang waktu lagi, saya ingin juga me Uh, I'd like to remind you on AECC Global Service sebelumnya. Uh, jadi Alfon akan memutarkan video pendek mengenai AECC Global Service. Oke, okay. uh, jadi prosesnya sangat mudah sekali. Pertama-tama kami akan uh, berdiskusi dengan Anda mengenai studi interest Anda tentunya. Uh, kemudian kami akan membantu Anda untuk apply ke universitas yang diminati. Tentunya Anda harus mempunyai dokumen yang diminta. Pertama-tama tentu sertifikat dan transkrip Anda. Yang penting juga IELTS, apalagi kalau ingin mendapatkan beasiswa IELTS. IBT atau PTE, kemudian juga diperlukan statement letter atau motivation letter dan juga reference letter serta copy passport Anda apabila uh, Anda sudah punya passport. Kemudian kami yang akan uh, melakukan uh, memasukkan aplikasi Anda ke university yang diminati dan apabila Anda sudah mendapatkan letter of acceptance, kami juga akan membantu Anda untuk accept the acceptance dan kami juga akan membantu Anda untuk apply student visa yang uh, harus dimiliki sebelum Anda berangkat. Oke, okay? jadi Anda tinggal duduk-duduk dan kirimkan pada kami dokumen yang, dimi yang Anda miliki. Sangat mudah. Oke, okay, selanjutnya uh, saya juga ingin bertanya, mulai bertanya kepada uh, Norman. Some questions that uh, parents and students ask us when they come to meet with us. Okay, the first sure. one important question is uh, that parents would always want to know is whether Sheffield Hallam is a public university or a private university. All right. Thank you. First of all, Lenny. Also, maybe you can talk a little bit about the ranking. Sure. Sure. Thank you, Lenny and AECC, first of all, uh, for this uh, wonderful event. And I'm very pleased to be here today to talk to you all about Sheffield Hallam. So a bit about the university. Um, we are actually a public university, okay, which is uh, located in Sheffield. And Sheffield itself is the fifth largest city in the UK with more than 600,000 people of the population. 
Now, Sheffield Hallam is the uh, top 10 largest university with more than 30,000 students, and it is one of the most modern, uh, progressive university in the UK today. So we are a very applied uh, university. So applied means that we put uh, knowledge into practice. So when you come to join us, it's not only come to the class to learn about the theories, but most importantly, we want you to gain the work experience. So most of our courses come with some placement route where you can enjoy a one year, uh, I mean, six to 12 months of uh, we call it placement to put your uh, learning into practice. And this is what we are. We are a teaching university. We want to maximize your potential to become one of the best uh, graduates in the future. Um, talking, uh, talking about a bit about ranking, um, I mean, we are now currently the top 50 uh, in the Guardian, all right? In fact, we have grown in terms of our ranking from year to year, uh, year on year onwards. So we, it is a testament, again, that we really emphasize on our students' uh, achievement, yeah? And more recently, we are the top 20 for the uh, student satisfaction out of 130 over universities in the UK. So this means that when students come to join us, when you join us in Sheffield Hallam, uh, rest assured that you are in good hands of a wonderful, experienced uh, lectures team. And also you are given with a very strong support in place. All right, and that is why our students are really satisfied uh, with all the teaching and learning experience. As most of you, maybe, you know, some of you out there, it may be the first time that you go abroad to overseas uh, for, uh, you know, for a very long distance away from home. <laughs> I'm sure it is very scary at first, but, you know, our student satisfaction ranking has shown that students are really satisfied. Satisfied means they are happy, gembira, yeah? Uh, sangat gembira dengan seluruh experience-nya. And this is what Sheffield Hallam can offer to all our students out there. So do not be worried like, oh dear, it's the first time. Rasa takut lah, <laughs> pertama kali ya, ke, ke universities uh, di luar negara, yeah? So because we have all the support system, we have our international experience team to give you the best support. Uh, satisfaction av uh, available yeah and in terms of other ranking uh, uh, we are quite top in terms of hospitality related subjects uh, our al al allied health such as physiotherapy is also one of the top uh, rank uh, subject in the UK yeah yeah uh, I mean uh, has uh, Lenny has any uh, questions to add on from here <laughs> Oke, okay, jadi teman-teman, seperti Norman sudah uh, katakan, Applied University ya. Jadi uh, mereka juga punya placement selama 6 bulan sampai 1 tahun, di mana kita sebagai students bisa put practice, uh, uh, put theory into practice tentunya. Kemudian uh, secara ranking, top 15 university in the UK by Guardian out of uh, hundreds university yang ada di UK, dan juga top 20 student satisfaction di UK. Jadi uh, bisa dipastikan apabila Anda belajar di Sheffield Hallam University, tentunya Anda akan uh, mendapatkan apa yang Anda inginkan. Mungkin ada pertanyaan tambahan uh, dari uh, penjelasan Norman. Oh, uh, mungkin uh, one question Norman. Uh, Norman juga mention bahwa Sheffield is the fifth Biggest city in the UK. Tapi kita kan tahu ya, uh, series in the UK is not as big as it is in in Indonesia, right? So, what can you do as an international student at Sheffield Hallam University? Right, uh, that's a studying, of course. <laughs> okay, as an international student, uh, you can do a lot of, uh, apart from your study, I mean, in, uh, as part of your course uh, uh, syllabus, you can do a lot of uh, other volunteering activities, uh, such as, you know, you can do like, uh, uh, to do volunteering activities for a local organization. So you can volunteer as a student ambassador, you can work in a local chari uh, charity organization to actually help uh, in, in terms of improving, you know, the overall lifestyle of local community. And this is very, uh, I would say, very important. 
because in today's world, employers are looking for people who are empathy, isn't it? People who can contribute back to the society. And at Sheffield Harlem, you have the opportunities. Uh, we have a lot of uh, 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 you know, clubs and societies. Uh, so you can join any clubs and society and volunteer to help the local community. And this is part of Sheffield Harlem uh, transforming life agenda. You know, this is our main motto. We really want to help a local community and not only in, in the UK. Uh, in fact, you know, they're, they're in, some, if, in some of the courses, you can actually do a transfer with our partners in many countries. Or, okay, in, uh, you can do it in Europe. So most of our students actually uh, go abroad to do some exchange and also they volunteer at the same time. And this really, uh, you know, stands out when, when they come to CV, you know, when they come to, uh, you know, a job interview in the future. All this experience really helped them to stand out. Why? Because uh, uh, people today are looking for character. You know, character is a very important uh, element that many uh, organizations are looking for. So at Sheffield Hallam, you have the opportunities to unleash your potential, not only in terms of study, okay? You can do a lot of volunteering, you can do part-time job, you can join uh, clubs and society, you can join a lot of sports activities. Uh, and all this will build you as a well-rounded person. And when you go, uh, let's say you go for a job interview one day and your boss or your future employer might ask, what have you learned in the university? Okay, And then you can say, oh, I volunteered in helping uh, to champion for some, uh, let's say, uh, uh, disabled people in the, in the UK. And this shows that you have empathy. You know, you have the heart to give back uh, to the society. And this is very important. You know, in today's world, people are just... Uh, you, a lot of people may only think that, oh, employers are actually looking at grades and things like that, but actually it is not. They look, are looking at your leadership qualities, they are looking at your overall skills, your, your characters, and this will really help you to boost your CV or boost your employability in the future. Yeah, so there are many opportunities. Uh, we have a, a placement, uh, we have volunteering, clubs and society, sports. You know, Sheffield is one of the uh, famous, I, I forgot to mention earlier, we are quite famous in sports business, sports related courses as well. So, in fact, every year they send students uh, representing Sheffield, Helen, to, uh, to compete with other universities in a national kind of a competition. Yeah. So when you are part of our community, you have all the experience, you have all the chances to showcase yourself. And it is not, I would say it is a journey. It is not, uh, Rome is not built in a night. <laughs> it takes a journey of uh, development. But at Sheffield Land, we really encourage you step by step along the way. And we, when you really try to take the first step forward, kalau anda, uh, you know, if you are confident to take the first step, you know, melangkah uh, 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 seribu langkah, ya, yeah? merangkah uh, langkah pertama itulah adalah uh, uh, a journey untuk ke seribu sukses di future, ya. Yeah? So at Shafalam, you have a lot of opportunities to do that. Okay. Okay, jadi teman-teman uh, banyak clubs, sports clubs, banyak society uh, club juga uh, ada part time job yang bisa dilakukan karena student bisa mendapatkan 20 jam per minggu untuk part-time job. Tapi yang penting yang ditekankan oleh Norman adalah volunteering activity. A lot of volunteering activity uh, is provided in Sheffield. Dan ini sangat penting untuk uh, ada di CV Anda, terutama apabila Anda apply for scholarship, tentu yang dilihat tidak hanya IPK Anda yang tinggi-tinggi, tapi juga apakah Anda punya kontribusi ter kepada masyarakat. Oke, okay, uh, berikutnya. Nanti uh, Norman, uh, oke, okay, for part-time job apart from uh, off-campus job, is there any part-time job available on campus? Ada pertanyaan dari Esfana Kelly. Uh, right. Norman. Right. Thank you. Uh, hi, Eswana Kelly. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Now, uh, that is a very good question. In fact, um, now at Sheffield Hallam, we have something called the Uni Hub. Uni Hub is like a portal where you can access to a lot of uh, part-time jobs, uh, uh, opportunities available 
in the university and also outside the university. So inside the campus, of course, there are sometimes they are looking for people in professional service. All right, let's say they're looking for uh, student ambassadors. Uh, they might looking for people who help out in the catering service or in the accommodation services. So from time to time, uh, you know, there may be some uh, part-time jobs available in camp on campus, but it will be de uh, it will depend on the uh, vacancy, you know, because like during peak time, for example, usually during graduation or open days, yeah. Uh, in fact, every year at Chef Yalam, we, uh, we have a lot of uh, series of open days uh, targeting different students. So we have uh, people from uh, other countries or in the UK come and visit our campus. And on that day, uh, they might people, you know, uh, we need extra help, helping hand, yeah. And then they might hire like, you know, a student or to do some part-time jobs, uh, things like that. So there are some uh, part-time opportunities at uh, on campus, but you you will need to go to our uni hub. There's a portal. Uh, you need to go there and then look for uh, the opportunities uh, uh, arises. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, there are there are part-time uh, opportunities available. Part-time jobs. Yeah. Thank All right, you. Thank you, uh, Norman. One more thing about Sheffield, uh, Norman. Uh, yeah. I think Indonesians only know London and maybe Manchester because they are crazy fans of Manchester United. How far it, is it from London is Sheffield? Okay, um, now Sheffield is located in the Midlands, so it's very near to Manchester. All right, so if you are traveling from Jakarta, uh, you can either take Etihad, Qatar Airlines, Emirates, and then you, you can transit in uh, Dubai, Doha, or Abu Dhabi. Then you fly into Manchester, yeah? So from Manchester to Sheffield is approximately one hour journey by train. Uh, if you are thinking to, you know, take a cab or taxi or Uber or something like that, it will take around one and a half hours to one and 40 minutes, yeah, by car. All right, and to London, it's only two and a half hours journey away by train. And um, to nearby cities like Nottingham, Birmingham, it's only like couples uh, hours of journey away, also by train. You know, in the UK, the public transport system is very uh, smooth. They are interconnected. So you don't have to worry about like, you know, uh, where to go because all the stations are linked together in one line. Yeah, they have, of course, there are several uh, trains operator, but they are linkable to major cities such as London. Uh, there's an express train to London, it's like two, two hours something. But sometimes, you know, if you change stops, that uh, it means that if, let's say, you're transiting in other cities, it may take longer period. But there's a fast train, direct train from Sheffield uh, to London, and it will take around uh, two hours plus something of train journey so it's not too far away and we have students actually study at Sheffield Hallam and every weekend they will go to London for shopping <laughs> because it's so convenient you know uh, if you if you stay in London the cost is very I would say it's higher compared to many cities so that's why they come study at Hallam and then during the weekends or holidays they can go to London for a day trip and then you know in the evening they can go back uh, to Sheffield now in terms of cost uh, you know, you know, uh, students may ask me, how much is a train cost fare like that? Um, to London, it will cost around 20 to 30 over pound uh, if, you are, if you are paying a student concession fee. And talking about this, right, I will highly encourage all students to apply with uh, what we call the one third railway card. It is, it is a student railway card where you can, want, you can get a one third discount of the original fare. So, for example, if today I'm not a student, if I'm traveling from Sheffield to London, it may cost like seventy pound or eighty pound for a return ticket, something like that. You know, it may cost even hundred, depend on the peak seasons, you know, and the peak timing. But if you have a one third of the railway card, it is so cheap. You know, it's you can get a fare like uh, fifteen pound to twenty five pound. You know, off peak season. Yeah, so you can, I would highly encourage you to buy the railway card if you are in uh, in the UK. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, jadi teman-teman jangan lupa uh, apply buat student concession sepertiga atau 30% discount yang mana lumayan bisa save cukup banyak. Okay, next, we would like to know uh, why students choose Sheffield Talam University. So before we talk about why shouldn't you serve at home university, let's uh, uh, watch the uh, video from Norman.
Oh, but before that, uh, uh... Hi, I'm Daniel and welcome to Sheffield Hallam University. I'm from Indonesia and I'm a master in IT management student. I decided to come to Sheffield Hallam because of the offer that given by my government in a scholarship program. I found that Sheffield Hallam offered me one particular course that I'm interested in, which is IT management course. With the combination of a management skills and IT skills, it will be good for me because I can see an opening in, the, in my career opportunity back in my country. And there will be a, a lot of enterprises, organizations that are going to need a person with those set of skills. Oke, okay, cool. Uh, itu tadi video dari Daniel, seorang student dari Indonesia yang mendapatkan beasiswa dari pemerintah Indonesia. Mungkin teman-teman perlu disadari bahwa uh, mereka yang mendapatkan scholarship dari pemerintah Indonesia tidak bisa stay on untuk bekerja di uh, UK setelah lulus ya. Harus langsung balik karena mereka harus uh, do sort of like payback time to the government. Okay, uh, Norman, uh, I would also like to ask you uh, what courses are popular at Sheffield Hallam internationally or domestically as well? And what is the popular course for Indonesian students? <laughs> All right, thank you, uh, Miss Lenny, for the wonderful questions. Okay, um, for our famous courses, as I mentioned a bit uh, briefly in my earlier uh, talk, would be hospitality uh, related courses and designing courses. Um, and then we are quite famous in terms of allied health, uh, like nursing. All right, physiotherapy. These are very, uh, I mean, a lot of students come and ask me about uh, this course. And also we have uh, courses in education. Uh, in fact, we are one of the earliest, uh, uh, one of the earliest institution in uh, in focusing education in the UK. We are one of the earlier uh, teaching college. Yeah. So education is also a very uh, so-called famous uh, courses as well. Now, for Indonesians, uh, in the past we had students coming to us to study events, uh, logistic and supply chain. Uh, international business management and also uh, things like um, uh, TSO, MA TSO as well and education related courses. Okay, and in fact, in uh, because in the past we have some students who studied masters with us. So, I, if I'm not mistaken, they they are looking for like uh, engineering and management because they want to uplift their skills, you know, uh, upgrade their relevant knowledge in that area. So, we do offer like an engineering course combining with management. So, when you graduate or when you progress in your career, you already know how to manage people while you are doing your specialties uh, uh, job in the field. Yeah, so these are some of the courses uh, that we are quite well known of. Uh, let me think if there's other uh, potential ones. Um, yeah, business related, such as a global MBA. Yeah, also uh, quite some of the well known uh, courses that we have. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, jadi untuk Indonesians uh, in particular. Event management, logistics supply chain, uh, TESOL, education related, as well as engineering. Okay, there are five questions uh, 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 from different people. So yep. Arisa Bremanta asks, for online class delivery, are we going to follow Indonesia time or UK time? Okay, now, uh, I understand with current situation, we are doing something called the blended learning. Okay, it is something like online and offline learning. Okay, uh, so students currently are in Sheffield, but some of the classes are done online. Okay, they are, uh, they are delivered in their, uh, in their, I mean, they can do it online in their own room, in their own accommodation. But some classes, they have to go to classes like a small tutorial where they need to meet up with the lecturers or other classmates for projects and things like that. So for now, online classes, they are, of course, following the UK time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as of current moment, okay, uh, the university's uh, standpoint is that uh, students 
who cannot travel to UK to study now uh, can do their class online at their home country at this current moment. Of course, things may change, yeah? so you need to keep update with the latest announcement. But as of now, uh, things are still done uh, online. Uh, so I would say 70% is done online and it's done on UK time. But we are aiming to go back to face-to-face, -to -face, especially in the September intake. Okay, when things are slowly improving, okay, we will go back to the normal kind of face-to-face -face teaching and learning. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, but there is a recording, right, Norman? Like if, if you are doing it at 3 o'clock in the UK time, it's 10 o'clock p.m. in Indonesia. Not that the students uh, have those off, but, you know, in case they uh, missed it, is there any recording, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, the Zoom, we will do it through Zoom, actually, on uh, uh, most of the online class, okay? So okay. I'm sure there will be recording, and then uh, the students can actually request from the individual course leader, yeah? Uh, of course, if you cannot catch up with some work, you can actually uh, make an appointment with your course leader so that they can actually help you, give you the extra support. And we understand that given the current restriction, we do understand uh, students may face some challenges, but do not worry, we do provide all the uh, support in place for you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next, we, uh, from Anita, what is the highest salary upon graduation in the UK for bachelor program? Okay. Hi, Anita. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, now, higher salary, uh, this, this, is, this will depend on the industry that you are going into, okay? And then, of, of, of course, it will depend on the demand of jobs in the UK. So, for example, if you are going for engineering, let's say if you are a fresh graduate, you can expect around, uh, I would say, minimum £24,000 per year, okay? to around 28,000, depending on the employers. I cannot give you a rough, you know, an exact figure now. And it will depend on your uh, industry, you know, because there's so many industries, so many fields. <laughs> I cannot give you an exact uh, amount of figure, but roughly it will be around uh, minimally uh, 18,000 pounds to up to 28,000 pounds of uh, 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 annual salary. That's something uh, that students can expect, yeah, roughly in that sort of uh, uh, range. But of course, it depends, again, coming, coming back to the point that I raised earlier, what can you offer to the company? Okay, what sort of skills? Is your character, do you show a good leadership skills? Yeah, these are the, uh, uh, the other things that employers are looking for. And if you can demonstrate that you have the relevant skills, you have the character, you're, you have a very strong English proficiency, uh, especially if you want to think about to work in the UK or in the Western countries. Uh, having all these elements in place is very important. And if you do, okay, I'm sure you can negotiate for a higher salary. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, jadi teman-teman, uh, sangat tergantung jawabannya ada kalau kita memiliki relevant skills, kemudian leadership skills, communication skills, dan juga negotiation skills tentunya, itu semua yang akan nantinya menentukan uh, uh, berapa kita akan uh, mendapat salary. Oke, okay, uh, can I bring my family when I study in the UK? And how to support my family is a question from Novel. I'm assuming, Novel, you are a master degree student, yeah? Hi, hi, no, hi, Novel. Nice to meet you. Um, right, in terms of family, uh, I get a lot of this question from mature students. Mature means they have families, you know, they have some people who uh, depend on them for support. So, yes, uh, you can bring your family, so and then your family will fall under, we call it the dependent visa. Yeah, so what you can do is you can apply first, okay, get an offer, then you apply for a visa. Uh, previously, they call it the tier four visa, and uh, recently they've changed the term to uh, something called a student visa. Yeah, it's the same thing. So you can apply for a student visa, and then you can at the same time you can also help uh, to uh, bring. I mean, apply uh, a, a dependent visa for your family. Now, depending on how many members, so uh, family would usually be your spouse or your partner. So you need to show some. Um, you know. Uh, proof that you have been living together and of course another thing is the bank statement i'm sure 
you know, ACC uh, counselors will, uh, will, uh, will advise you further on that. But just to briefly to mention about the requirement is that you need to show sufficient uh, uh, amount of maintenance fund in the, U in the UK. So maintenance fund means a, 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 a sum of money that you have in the bank to show that you have sufficient uh, fund to survive in the UK. Yeah, so you need to show the relevant maintenance fund for yourself and for your family members. Now, family members does not including your parents. Yes, I'm so sorry that you cannot bring your. Let's say you you can't bring your parents uh, to go to the UK for under the you know the studying visa. You can bring your spouse, your 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 I mean your partner, and also your children. Yeah, so your kids. Now, uh, there are many detailed uh, information that you need to find further. So, for example, kids under, uh, 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 you know, compulsory schooling age, they must go to schools in the UK. So you may need to find extra things like, okay, uh, what schools that they go into, things like that, and what are the support uh, system. Now, if you, if you have a baby, uh, zero to two years old, you may need to uh, leave them in a nursery. And again, these are the things that you need to go at the extra miles to find the relevant support. Yeah, and your dependent can actually uh, work. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, you you may need to check the uh, visa regulation again. But as far as I am concerned, uh, dependents can work in the UK. Yeah. So, but if you are bringing children along, let's say underage children, uh, one of you, let's say you or your wife or your wife or your husband or your partner, one of you must be present with the children at all time. So you cannot, I mean, you cannot, both of you cannot go out to work or study and leaving the children alone at home. This is illegal yeah, in the UK. So one of the guardian must be present with their children at all time. Okay, so maybe you can arrange the different time. Let's say if you go study, you can arrange time for your partner to look after your kids. Now, if your partner go out for some part-time job, you can take care of your children. Yeah. So, but for further uh, detail, please come and approach us. We will guide you better. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Jadi, in short, novel, ya, bisa bawa family, tapi tentu ada kondisi-kondisi yang harus dipenuhi. Seperti misalnya, uh, untuk anak yang berusia sekolah, harus sekolah. Oleh sebab itu, apabila Anda berencana untuk membawa anak Anda, silakan hubungi AECC dan kita akan dengan mudah membantu mencarikan sekolah untuk anak Anda. Seperti Norman bilang tadi, tidak boleh meninggalkan anak di rumah sementara saya, uh, Anda dan istri Anda misalnya bekerja. Harus ada satu orang dewasa yang uh, supervise anaknya. Oke, okay, next uh, question berikutnya dari Nur Lydia. I'm graduating high school this year in June and looking for business major, but I'm still under 18. Is it eligible to apply to Shuffle Palam? <laughs> okay. Hi, no, Lydia. Nice meeting you. Um, right. Uh, now, this under 18 policy is currently still in place uh, in, at Shuffle Palam. So at the point of enrollment, you need to be 18 years old. Okay, so uh, please check with us because I do not know when is your date of birth. Let's say your intake start in September. Okay, I mean the majority intake starts in September. So upon enrollment, you must uh, pass your birth date. So meaning that if you are born between January and August, yes, we can accept you. Okay, but if you are born after, let's say October, uh, you know, I'm so sorry that uh, you force under the seven, uh, under 17 uh, category and we cannot accept you at that point in time. Uh, though the university is trying to uh, make some changes in the future, but as of current standpoint, our stand is you must be 18 years old when you enroll. Now, the reason why we make this statement is that, uh, you know, 18 years old is considered adult in the UK. So, all of our classroom lessons, teachings are tailored towards people who are over 18, means you are adult, you have upgraded to become an adult. So the content can be much more like, you know, when you go for a movie, right? Under 18, there's a slash, right? There's some movie, it's the same thing. So if you want to accept students under 18, we need to change the ways that the content of the lectures, yeah? And there might be some limitation un uh, for under 18 students, such as you need to uh, go for a boarding uh, uh, house. So you need to live with a guardian in the UK. You need to make those sort of arrangements. So at Helen, we currently do not have those kind of arrangement in place. So at, at current point, we are accepting only uh, 18 years old and above. Thank you. Okay. Um... 
All right, next question uh, from Graciela. I'm graduated from Bachelor of Mathematics. Is there any available scholarship for master in mathematics or data science? All right. Hi, Graciela. Mm, nice meeting you. Thank you for your question. Um, now, uh, as far as I can remember in my mind, we we let's let me talk about the, the course first. We do offer a course in big data analytics, masters of science in big data analytics. And if you are graduated from a bachelor degree in maths, we can accept you. Uh, our requirement is a two two, meaning that you need to have an overall CGPA of two point five, two point eight. You know those kind of grade that you you should have now let's say you fall under the category do not worry uh, come and talk to me i will uh, try to uh, uh, evaluate your other skills okay so we we are we are quite flexible in terms of our entry requirements as long as you show a very strong commitment in that particular subject areas uh, you demonstrate that you really want and you actually take an extra effort to you know to implement yourself in terms of uh, sorry to supplement yourself for the course we can actually consider you for a place of study now uh for mathematics wise uh i don't think we offer for master's level at current point uh, but i'll need to double check but i'm very sure that we have a big data analytics course which is very relevant in today's uh you know skills because the future is all about data isn't it <laughs> All right. So, and about scholarship, uh, we do offer scholarship. It is called a Transform Together Scholarship, where you it is a competitive scholarship. Now, what is the process like? You need to uh, apply first, get an offer, then you can go to our scholarship website and apply for the Transform Together Scholarship. And the closing date is thirty first of May. Yeah. Remember, 31st of May 2021 for September intake. So if you're thinking to, uh, to consider for a scholarship, you can uh, remember to get an offer first and apply before 31st of May. And if you are successful, you'll be given 50% tuition fee waiver. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot. So for, a, let's say, a MSc in Big Data Analytics will cost around uh, £14,460, okay? That's the rough uh, kind of uh, uh, tuition fee amount. And if you manage to get the scholarship, it will be a 50% of the 14,460 pound, meaning that it will be 7,230 uh, pound something. Yeah, so it will be 50% discount if you get the scholarship. Now we have another, I, I, I believe we'll talk about it later. So I'll reserve it, the, you know, the great scholarship, which we'll mention later. So stay tuned <laughs> to know more about the bigger scholarship later. But we also offer uh, an automatic discount if you're domiciled in Indonesia. So if you're applying today, we are offering you a £3,000 discount. Yeah, this is automatic for you, for all Indonesian students. So grab that opportunities. Yeah. Uh, let's say for a big data analytics, the cost is £14,460. After £3,000, it will be £11,460. Yeah, that £3,000 is for you. <laughs> okay, so I hope uh, I've answered your question. And if you want to know more, the bigger scholarship, stay tuned until our next question. Thank you. Okay. Uh... Uh, that question actually uh, also in line with my question about the range of tuition fee, which you mentioned around 14,000 niche. Uh, also, is there any bursary or additional scholarship for undergraduate and postgraduate students? So it's been answered. Ya, yeah, teman-teman, jadi uh, core tuition fee-nya sekitar 14,000-an. 14.400, ada yang 15.000 sekian. Kemudian, um, apabila Anda apply hari ini atau dalam bulan ini melalui AECC Global, tentunya Anda automatically akan mendapatkan reduction sebesar 3.000 dolar, uh, uh, pound, I mean. Okay. Then, of course, you can also apply for that transform scholarships yang up, is it up to 50%, right? Yeah, uh, yeah it's 50% uh, it discount. 50% discount, yang mana cukup besar. And uh, the 3,000 and the transform uh, scholarship can be combined, right? Normal, uh, jadi bisa. No, I, I have to clarify. It is either oh. one, okay? Oh, so either one. Yeah, so either you get a 3,000 pound or a 50% discount. 
and the requirement for the scholarship is actually you need to have at least 3.5 CGPA in your studies. Okay, a first class honor uh, relevant. Okay, then you can apply for the 50% uh, scholarship. Oh, okay, okay. Jadi minimum harus ada GPA 3.5 sebelum Anda bisa apply untuk mendapatkan scholarship yang uh, 50%. Tapi nevertheless, uh, berapapun itu, apabila Anda apply di Sheffield Hallam University, Anda tetap akan mendapatkan uh, the scholarship. Yang berbeda hanyalah jumlahnya saja. Okay, Norman, another question. Apabila, uh, no, uh, when you have a GPA of 3.5, right? Yeah. What are the important factors will Sheffield Hallam look into to win the scholarship? I'm sure okay. a scholarship is not everybody, right? It's not for everybody. Yeah. So one of the criteria that we are looking for, again, coming back to the character, Okay, coming back to the questions of how you can contribute to the local community through your skills, through your mm -hmm. expertise, yeah? Because uh, as I mentioned earlier, Sheffield Hallam is about transforming life. We want to help people to achieve their fullest potential. So one of the questions that the panels are looking for is, uh, what sort of things that you can contribute during your studies? So in one part of the question, uh, you, in no more than 500 words, you need to type an essay talking about yourself. All right, um, for example, uh, in the past, I have gained uh, some soft skills, such as a good leadership skills in terms of managing in certain organization, just for example. So you can say, if I'm given the chance of winning this scholarship, I will apply those relevant skills in a local organization called something. So you have to do some research first in the area that you are passionate about. Let's say you are passionate about education or you want to champion for uh, uh, disabled people, you want to, uh, you know, champion for some minority groups of people, you can definitely write that in your essay, okay? You can say, I will help them by doing such and such, I will implement some projects, uh, lead the local community, and I will also encourage cohesion and cooperation between international students and uh, home students, so that we can build a well-rounded and diversified community at Hallam. And I will use my skills to promote that, something like that. You know, you have to come up with something that you want to do, you want to achieve during your studies, and how you can uh, use your relevant skills or expertise to bring forth the transforming life agenda. And if you can manage to convince the panel, then you can get it. Okay, cool. Jadi teman-teman, uh, seperti Norman bilang, tentu soft skills, relevant skills, leadership skills, communication skills, dan juga yang penting adalah seberapa besar Anda sudah contribute untuk uh, komunitas Anda. Berarti sebelum Anda apply for scholarship, yang mana mungkin Anda masih belajar di Indonesia, masih ambil bachelor degree di Indonesia, Anda sudah harus mulai mempunyai uh, contribution terhadap your surrounding community. Jadi tidak jangan tunggu sampai Anda sampai di UK, tapi saat ini apabila Anda masih do your bachelor degree and akan ambil master degree, you have to start your community uh, contribution di Indonesia. Okay, uh, uh, it's around 15 minutes left, so I'd like to ask you Norman about the great scholarship. As we all know, Sheffield Hallam is also involved in the great scholarship. Could you tell us a little bit in uh, detail on the great scholarship that Sheffield Hallam has? Right. So um, the great scholarship is actually a collaboration with British Council. So we are offering a £10,000 discount. Wow, <laughs> that's a, a big amount of fun for you to come and study with us. So this that's is again huge. a very competitive, uh, uh, you know, a competitive scheme. And out of the whole Indonesia uh, students, we only choose one, <laughs> okay? So last year we have one uh, Indonesian students who got it, okay? So this year we also have the same chance. Again, it's an opportunity out there. And the deadline for applying is again 31st of May, 2021, yeah? And the requirement is that you need to get an offer letter. Again, it's the same thing. You need to get an offer letter and go to the website to apply. 
And the question is very similar to the 50% Transform Together scholarship. Again, how you can convince them to give you uh, a, a, you know, the 10,000 pound discount. So let's say uh, if I made a, 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 an, a master's degree around 14, 15,000 pound, if you get 10,000 pound, you only need to pay like 4,000 or 5,000 pound to go study at Sheffield. This is so, so affordable. And it's a chance that, you know, don't miss it out, you know, because it is once in a lifetime uh, chance. And not, you know, this scholarship is not every year. Sometimes British Council will not give a uh, scholarship to Indonesia. Uh, sometimes they will change the market. Sometimes they only give to Malaysians or Thai students. But this year, again, they are choosing one Indonesian student for Sheffield Hallam. So please, uh, you know, take, grab the opportunity and apply for it. Yeah? Thank you. Okay, uh, jadi teman-teman, I'll just uh, remind you once again, you don't have to go to the website and apply. You just contact AECC Global. You send all the documents that, that are necessary to be sent. Nanti kami akan informasikan kepada Anda apa saja dokumen yang diperlukan. Dan kami yang akan mengapply, uh, mengirim aplikasi Anda ke Sheffield Hallam University melalui portal, melalui agent portal kami. Jadi, nggak usah repot, Anda hanya tinggal WhatsApp atau email kami, dan kami akan bantu Anda untuk mendapatkan letter of acceptance sebelum Anda bisa apply untuk mendapatkan the great scholarship. Oke? Okay? Yeah. Uh, Norma, when yes. is the the deadline maybe you mentioned it but i missed it but boleh uh, tell us once again when is the deadline of the great scholarship okay it is the same as a transform together scholarship which will be 31st 31 bulan mei ya 2021 31st of may 2021 and i i just want to add on something last year winner is actually from aecc as well <laughs> <laughs> the, the students Yay! apply to ACC as well. So this year, you have the chance. So grab it, <laughs> grab it, yeah. So make sure you contact AECC Global and uh, launch in your application through our portal. Teman-teman, jangan lupa hubungi segera AECC untuk apply ke Shafet Halam dan mendapatkan letter of acceptance. Kami tidak sarankan Anda untuk uh, tunggu nanti-nanti sampai dekat di deadline. Kami sarankan Anda untuk uh, langsung kontak kami secepatnya dan launch the application. Alright. Uh, berikutnya kami masih ada pertanyaan lagi. Uh, Alfon boleh tolong. What is the average monthly accommodation pricing in Sheffield Hallam? Ah, hi Wendy, thanks for the question. Uh, this is a very common question that people ask. Now, for uh, in the UK, they are calculated based on weekly, yeah, by Minggu. So depending on the location, if you are studying at the city campus, which is, uh, you know, if you are studying business, marketing, or hospitality related subjects or engineering, uh, the, the, there are many accommodation selection and one week averagely is around 100 pounds. The last time I saw one, there's one famous one called Let Me Point, which is just five minutes away. It only costs like 90 pounds per week and it is and sweet. You have your own toilet, you have your own study space, your own privacy for 90 pounds per week only, starting from, yeah? So a lot of uh, Lumayan, uh, uh, a price range of very affordable price. So if you're talking, talking about monthly, let's say 100 pound average per week, monthly it will be costing around 400 to 800 pounds. That's the kind of range that I can offer to you. Thank you. Okay, that would be in Sheffield, right? The campus yeah. accommodation. What about outside the campus? What's the opportunity to find an accommodation outside the campus? Yeah, I just want to make a clarification. Uh, Sheffield Hallam does not own any of the property, though we do work with private accommodation like Unite. So we are in the city, our campus is in the city center, yeah? So there are many uh, private providers out there. So uh, come and contact uh, AECC and, or contact us, all right? We will guide you on how to make the relevant application, yeah? But averagely, it's, it's made available everywhere, yeah. All right. Right, uh, for the remaining uh, minutes we have, uh, I'd like to also ask you about PhD study, Norman. Tell us a little bit about your PhD study, about, uh, you know, what you, 
uh, definitely PhD study will be a mature age students. The four uh, doing the PhD at uh, Sheffield will be about three or four years. They might want to bring the family along with them, right? Uh, yeah. What benefit? Um, I, I mean, how can they uh, survive at uh, Sheffield Hallam to do PhD study? <laughs> okay, how to survive the PhD study? First of all, you need to have very strong passion in your research area because PhD is a long journey. It's, it, it's not easy. I'm, I'm being frank with you all. PhD study is not easy. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of commitment, time to do a lot of reading, a lot of research. You know, you need to spend most a lot of time uh, doing a PhD studies. Yeah. But I would say how to survive and how to be successful is the close contact with your lecturer, your supervisor. The relationship is very important because your supervisor has a relevant, a similar interest of your field. And this is another point that I, I want to emphasize. You need to find a supervisor or uh, your, your lecturer or an academic support that has similar background or similar interest with what you want to do. Then your journey will be much smoother. Yeah, uh, I, can, I can raise one uh, example. Recently, I have one Indonesian student who has just completed a PhD study at Sheffield Hallam. Now he wanted to study another master degree <laughs> in another field. So I asked him, how did you manage to you know, be successful? You know, he brought his family. He has a uh, wife and children. And uh, his wife is working part-time in Sheffield. So uh, he, he told me that the relationship, and I'm very surprised, you know, when I say, oh, do you know this lecturer, this particular uh, course leader? He said, yeah, they are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone in the university and this is the key to success. Yeah. So if you want to, uh, uh, to be successful in your PhD studies, you need to have good relationship with your lecturers or with your supervisor and also the commitment and time uh, that you spend in that relevant field. You need to have strong interest. And what is the process like? First of all, you need to write a research proposal first and then you can submit through a, again AECC and they will, they will come and contact me and then I will send your relevant uh, you know, research proposal and details to the faculty. Yeah? Now, the PhD has a group as their own admission team. Okay? So they will continuously uh, contact you directly yeah? because they, sometimes they want to find out more. They might want to interview you further to ask you some question. And then, of course, for PhD study, the bar is a bit higher. You need to have IOPS of 7.0, yeah? This is the uh, requirement. Because if you do not have the English views, uh, I will say your PhD life will be <laughs> very suffering. <laughs> because at PhD, you need to know how to challenge ideas. You need to defend your position. And you need to write a lot of theses and, and viva uh, session as well. And you need to join a lot of conference. So English, again, is one of the main criteria that we are looking. Uh, and the process is, if you do not have IELTS 7.0, they will not process your application. Yeah. So IELTS is a very important thing that they are looking for, for PhD students. Jadi, teman-teman, kalau untuk PhD, harus sudah punya IELTS. Sedangkan untuk courses lainnya in, in bachelor atau master, IELTS-nya bisa disusulkan kemudian. Ya, Anda bisa mendapatkan conditional letter of acceptance without IELTS. Tapi kalau PhD tanpa IELTS, tidak akan diproses application -nya. Oke, kita masih punya beberapa pertanyaan di lima menit terakhir. Uh, how big is the Indonesian student population at Sheffield Hallam dari Oke Octavianus? Oke, okay. now at Hallam, our international student is around four to five thousand students from all around the world. We have people from Southeast Asia, Middle East, India, China, uh, Europeans, and of course Americans. Yeah, but for Indonesians, the population is not too many. It's around eighty to hundred uh, Indonesian students. And uh, now I'm saying uh, based on our past uh, students that join us. You know, uh, every year students will there'll be around 15 to 20 students so i'm i'm assuming like year by year let's say a uh, student study three years plus master or phd so if there are around 20 to 25 students per year okay times four okay it will be around 80 to 100 students of indonesian so do not worry uh, you have the support system you do have our international uh, team to look after students and 
I would encourage you to go out beyond your comfort zone. Go and reach out to meet new people. Yeah, you can start off with uh, meeting people from Southeast Asia, from Middle East, China, India, and then slowly meet the local people. And this will open up your networks, open your eyes, and it's very beneficial for your future career progression. Thank you. Thank you. And another question from Farisa. For Master Nursing Program, is it eligible to apply or should I retake the test for All Master right. Thank you, Varisa, for your question. Uh, for masters in nursing, the again the standard is a bit high because uh, as as a nurse, you need to already know what is the relevant knowledge in the field. So you are eligible if you have some uh, uh, background in the nursing, uh, you know, experience. Now, for nursing, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there's something called a pre-registration. So we have masters of nursing pre-registration it means pre-registration means that you are not yet registered as a nurse in the uk so you are you'll be uh considered for that course now i use consider because why i need to check your transcript first your relevant work experience and of course ielts again uh, for nursing against the ielts if i'm not mistaken is around 6.5 to uh, 7 yeah the ielts recommend is slightly higher compared to other courses so come and talk to us okay after this uh, write us an email then i'll i'll help you to check for the necessary requirement thank you okay uh mungkin oh uh, one more one more question for phd student like some other countries will dependent get free schooling in the uk or student will need to pay for the dependent schooling okay uh, I'm uh, hi Valerie. Thanks for the question. Uh, now, for dependent, I'm assuming that you're thinking about children, right? Kids. Now, uh, up to age 18 years old, you can uh, let your children or dependent to study for free in the local school. But you need to write. You know, you need to approach the schools uh, on your own accord. Okay. Uh, you can talk to them, ask whether if you know uh, my kids can join the school or not. But from college uh, years onward, meaning that if they are going for A levels or university, you have to pay from your own uh, fund. Yeah, it okay. is not free anymore. Under eighteen, below uh, compulsory schooling age, is all free for students. Okay, and uh, that's only for PhD, uh, Norman, or also for master students. I would say master students Family. and uh, postgraduate students and above. Yeah. Ah, oh, postgraduate students. Yeah, because in some countries, for example. Uh, uh, some other countries, only the PhD uh, students dependent will get a free schooling, but the private the private students don't. Okay, yeah. uh, is there from Agah Garnadi? Is there any possibility to take postgraduate research or coursework studies through distance learning? I'm interested in the MSc Enhanced Diagnostic Imaging, which is offered through distance learning. All right. Hi, Aga. Thanks for the question. Uh, now, some courses that are offered in distance learning, you, you may have to check the website. I will help you to check again to double confirm because not all courses that are offered in distance learning is offered for international students. Yeah, yeah we, we need to do the double yeah, we need to do the double checking. Now, if the course is offered distance learning and it's open for internationals, Okay, then you, you can take that uh, course. Yeah, we need to check on the visa as well for that. So come and uh, inquire us uh, after this. So, and then I will help you to do the necessary check later. Thank you. Okay, uh, that is right on the dot that we will have to uh, end the session. Is there any other questions from the audience? If there is no other questions, because we uh, uh, it's two, uh, I suppose we need to end the session. So once again, thank you very much, Norman, to be in the platform today. And thank you so much, audience, for being here today with us. Jangan, yeah, lupa, yeah. jangan lupa, audience, segera hubungi AECC Global di um, <coughs> WhatsApp atau nomor telepon atau email yang sudah Anda Ketahui dan kami akan segera membantu anda dengan setiap pertanyaan anda. Yeah, so from from me, I'm Norman signing off. Thank you very much for your time today, and uh, my team and I look forward to welcome you to Sheffield Hallam University. And your journey begins now with AECC. Thank you. Stay safe, guys, and stay, stay healthy. Safe. Bye.
Bye Thank for you. now. Bye. Sheffield Hallam University, we have a dedicated team of people whose sole job is to help you transition into your life in the UK. They are the International Experience Team and here is a little bit of what they do. Culture Connect is Sheffield Hallam biggest peer mentoring scheme. It helps new students to settle down into university life by matching them with an experienced international student. The insights they share with you are extremely valuable. So, whether you, a new student or experienced international student, have advice to share, get involved. If you'd like to meet new people from around the world, Conversation Club is for you. Sheffield Harlem has students from over 100 different countries on its lively multicultural campus. It's a great place to make new friends when you first arrive here. The University English Scheme is a free series of classes focusing on English language needed for academic study, including reading, writing, listening and speaking. There is also a one-to-one -one service available, ensuring you make the most of your studies here.
The International Experience team wants you to have fantastic time while you're living in the UK. They arrange trips right here in Sheffield, where you can learn about this vibrant modern city, as well as long history and culture. But they also organize trips over the UK, right here, this beautiful free district. Being located in the center of the UK, there is a lot of opportunity to travel, allowing you to see everything the UK has to offer. So, what are you waiting for? At Sheffield Hallam, the team here is ready and waiting to make your international experience amazing.